All right. Good morning, everyone. Today is daily vlog number 11, and it is 11 about 11 o'clock. It is just two minutes shy of being 11, and I actually have an apartment showing today virtually um, through Google Hangout. So I will be meeting with a realtor, and she'll be walking me through the apartment that I'm looking at. So this is super exciting and fun. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about what it's been like shopping for apartments during a pandemic, especially when I'm not even in Philadelphia right now. I'm at my parents' house in my hometown. So it's been a little bit interesting. I was previously shopping for apartments even before I came home. So I've been shopping for a while. So I'll talk a little bit about my whole experience so far and then also now really looking because I'm looking to move like very soon um my expected move-in date was May 1st so as long as it's within that timeline then I should be good but I'll talk a little bit more about like what it's been like searching because I'm going to have to make a decision on a on an apartment without actually physically seeing it in person so um I am going to hop on this tour and I'll like kind of bring you guys along with if possible and show you kind of like what it's like. I don't even know what it's like. I haven't done this before, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed. I will keep you guys updated though and let you guys know how it all went. So these are virtually staged. So this furniture is not actually there, but it's just plopped there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And these are all brand new construction. The tanny side, you would be the first tenant. And then is this, this is this like the exact layout? I was just gonna say that. Yeah, you you, you got it, got it. Okay. It's the exact apartment. So this is where it faces the parking lot. It's on the end. Got it. It's the end of the complex. That over here, washer dryers in there, closet, unit door here. That's an air phone. Okay. I just got done with the call for the apartment and that went really well um it was actually like the exact same thing like I had already looked at um the apartment online which is what she showed me and then she also went through like a virtual like um 3d run through of the apartment which I already saw as well online but it was nice that she was actually just there to like talk to me and answer any questions that I had so we could have like a good conversation um rather than just me like looking at the virtual tour so I wasn't necessarily 100% into this apartment but it is kind of within my price range that I'm looking at and it also is available now so the chances of me getting it um the chances of me getting it would be pretty high so i figured whatever like it's coming down to the wire now i might as well just like start applying for apartments even like if they're not 100 percent what i'm looking for um so anyway that went really well and it actually made me more interested in the apartment than i was before so i am going to She's going to follow up with me through email and send me all the information that I need. I'll have to apply um, if I'm interested. So that's how that apartment went. That was actually my first virtual tour when, um, since being at home. I'm, I'm happy that things are kind of like moving along now and I'm kind of like narrowing down where I want to live. But anyway, I will kind of talk a little bit more about my previous apartment hunting experience and also like what's been going on the past few days in a little bit. At the end of February, I um, toured an apartment that I absolutely fell in love with. It's a studio apartment. Um, it was exactly everything I wanted. It was just a little bit out of my price range, but I still applied for it hoping that I could potentially negotiate on the price. I uh, was told when I toured the apartment that a girl had already applied and she was ahead of me in line, but she was kind of like moving slow with the process of like putting down a deposit and you can't actually secure the apartment until you put down the, the deposit. They were still showing the apartment in the process. So I was like, okay, well, if this girl's being slow, like, I know I could be so much faster. I'm sure, like, I could 
apply, put down a deposit and do everything like that. So I applied and then a few days later, I heard back from the realtor and he said that the other girl was approved and she matched the profile that they were looking for. So like the credit score, income, all of that. So I was of course, you know, all bummed because I didn't get it and I surely felt like I was going to, but they picked the other girl over me. But after I got declined, I continued to look for apartments and just hadn't found anything that I really liked enough. Again, that was at the end of February. I found out the beginning of March that I would not be getting that apartment. So ever since March, you know, I've been really intensely looking for apartments because I have an expected move-in date of May 1st. So that would give me two months to look for an apartment, which is no big deal. Typically with apartments, at least in Philly, you typically look for an apartment when you're actually ready to move in. So that's actually really crazy to me because I'm a huge planner and I like to have things set in stone. I started looking again March and was looking and looking, found nothing, was going on apartments.com, Realtor, Zillow, Craigslist, literally was looking everywhere and was just seeing the same apartments over and over again. I'm pretty sure I've seen every single apartment within my price range in Philadelphia. I started uh, within the past two weeks, sending a bunch of inquiries to a bunch of different apartments um, in the city. Was losing hope, you know, but... Then comes along an email to my inbox two nights ago on Tuesday night, and I'll tell you about that. So this past Monday, I it is now Thursday, this past Monday, I was looking at this apartment for a, a decent amount of time, and I was just like, you know what, like, why not do schedule a virtual tour? Because right now we are doing virtual tours. I'm not even in the Philadelphia area, cannot see it an apartment in person, nor do I want to. So bless up for this uh, real estate company, real estate agency doing virtual tours. So I signed up for a virtual tour for today, which you would have just seen. And then that was Monday, Tuesday night, I get an email from the realtor that um, was managing or whatever the apartment that I fell in love with and I didn't end up getting. You following along? So. I get an email from him. He's like just checking up on me to see if everything's going well, if I'm still going through the apartment search and looking. Um, and he says, I have an upcoming availability in the apartment you are looking at. It's the exact same style, layout, structure as the one you toured and it's cheaper and within my price range. So I hopped on that, immediately mailed him back the next day when I read the email, and we were going back and forth, trying to figure things out. Long story short, it is with the same company that I just toured the other apartment with today, and they're kind of like business partners. So she found out, the realtor that I toured with today, she found out that I was still looking at the other apartment they were both confused and were like, what, what is going on? Like, is she scamming us or whatever? Or like she leading us on? So long story short, just a lot of confusion. And I am in the final stages of getting the apartment that I love and fell in love with. I'm in the final stages. And a month and a half ago, I thought this was just not gonna work out and I'd never get to live in this apartment. And now there's a lot more hope than there was a month and a half ago. So nothing is finalized yet. By the end of the day today, you know, this could be a done deal and I could have gotten the apartment or not. I highly doubt it because in order for me to settle on the apartment, like I said earlier, you have to put a, a deposit down and it's already 234 so I highly doubt that'll all get processed within the next few business hours so if anything I'm guessing tomorrow would be the finalization of everything if all goes well I said that I would want to negotiate on the price and my realtor said that he doesn't think there would be an issue with that so fingers crossed but um my now move-in date 
is going to be June 5th if this all does fall through because the, t the current tenant that lives there right now, um, they are moving out the 31st of May. So when he told me that, I was like, you know what? I don't care. I would care if it was another apartment, but this is the apartment that I absolutely love. Anyway, we'll see where this goes. Hopefully all goes well, um, but I sent a, we're trying to negotiate on the price and the actual landlord of the apartment building just has to accept the negotiation and accept everything else, the proposal that the realtor is proposing to them. And then the realtor has to come back to me. I have to put a deposit down and do all of the signing and everything, and then we will be good to go. So this is a very long tangent. It will be a lot of help because I will be doing moving vlogs and all of that stuff. In other news, um, I wanted to give you guys some tips for searching for an apartment during a pandemic. Searching right now, just making sure that you're searching on all of the different websites because a realtor actually told me this recently. Um, usually when they have a new listing, they usually upload it to every single major um, like website that you find on the internet for apartments such as Zillow, apartments.com, realtor.com. So they just upload it to all of the major ones, but there are sometimes like other smaller websites that they upload to that you don't think to go to. Um, and also sometimes they don't upload them to all of the websites. So if you check Zillow, that doesn't mean that every apartment you see there is like the only apartments that are available. I've actually found success in going on Zillow and looking at different realtors where it gives you more information. Look at the realtor if it says who it is and then I go specifically to that realtor's website and look at all of their listings through there. That has served me a lot of help going through all of the apartments um, and then also I just keep a running list of any apartment that I'm interested in and also those that I reached out to for an inquiry. Um, it does suck because you won't be able to actually physically see the apartment right now, obviously, but if, if they have any source of like virtual tours, definitely take advantage of those and set up a meeting for that because although you might not think it helps, you do get a better visual, especially if you can talk to the realtor themselves while being on the call. Um, so that while you're going through the virtual tour, if you have any questions, you can ask them as if you would when you view the apartment in person. So that I found to be helpful today, especially. Another tip would just be to continuously look. Sometimes listings just pop up and are taken off the market very quickly so I would at least check maybe every other day and I know it can seem redundant but if you want an apartment and if you're looking for a very specific apartment like myself um, you want to keep checking because you want to be that first person that's reaching out or one of the first persons that is reaching out um, so that you could be first in line for that apartment and also don't hurt to negotiate during this time Say the rent is $1,400 a month and you're looking at a 450 square feet apartment. That doesn't really match up, to be honest, in my eyes. Um, in this time, I feel like, of course, like if it's a top of the line apartment, maybe it would. But in my eyes, depending on the case, feel it out. I think you can negotiate on the price, offer them a more realistic price. Um, even if you're willing to say to them like, listen, instead of a 12 month lease, I can stay for 13 months or 15 months, like whatever you're willing to say to hopefully entice them to negotiate with you, that could be a huge help, especially right now if you're tight on money. I think everyone really understands, um, yes, the realtors are trying to make a sale, but also you know, people are struggling with money, people don't really have jobs right now. So I think in this time, people can be a little bit more understanding. So it doesn't hurt to at least try to negotiate if you think that you can. Um, and if you feel comfortable, of course, I think that a realtor would 
probably prefer an apartment that's been sitting there for 50 plus days or whatever it is to negotiate on the price and make a profit on that listing rather than let it sit there in hopes that someone will take it for the price that it is or offer a higher price because they really want it or something. I don't know what people do, but um, I definitely recommend negotiating on the price if you can. That has been like my main objective throughout this entire apartment search. I've been like looking above my price range and within my price range, but there hasn't been much within my price range. So I've been looking a little bit above just so that I can see what's available in another price range and then see if I can find an apartment that I definitely feel positive trying to negotiate a price more within my range um, so it doesn't hurt. That's all I'm saying. It doesn't hurt to negotiate. It doesn't hurt to look above your price range. Definitely set a price range though. Um, set some kind of non-negotiables that you're really looking for within a, an apartment. So that you have a better idea of what you want when you're actually searching because it will help you narrow down your search so much more. Specifically, I was looking for a one to two bed. Two bed was, you know, shooting for the stars basically. One to two bed, um, one bath, or if it was a good studio apartment where there was enough space, I was also looking at studio apartments. When you go onto websites, you can narrow down your search by picking out these specific things. I typically would only narrow it down to um, my price range and that's it and the area that I was searching in. But you can of course like get more specific with your search if you want. I was just willing to look at everything. But my price range was around $1,250 and I was looking up to the $1,400 price range because I figured why not look up there, like I said, if I can potentially try and negotiate on a price more within my range if it felt right. And also it just gives, gives you a better idea of what's out there for the price that is listed. Those were the two things that I was like actually, you know, those were obviously extremely important to me so they they were higher priority than everything else but i'm about to get super specific about what i wanted and like i said you're never going to get everything that you want so you will have to most likely forego something that you do want so first i wanted white walls had to be white walls and you're probably going to sit here and laugh at me but listen when you're a content creator it's just so much easier to have a space in which you can create content from every single angle. That, of course, is not the most important thing. Um, I would have foregone that if I if it came down to it, but just hear me out, okay? White walls, white cabinets in the kitchen. Um, not super specific about that, but I just wanted it to be very bright. Also, white brings me happiness. So I really like being in a very aesthetic place where, you know, it's making me happy. Um, as in just like being very bright. So going with the bright theme, I wanted windows in every single room. So if they're, except for the bathroom, that wasn't a necessity. If it was in the bathroom, you know, that's a an extra plus. But I wanted a window, a big window or several windows in my room and in the living room slash kitchen because I need natural light everywhere. Like that is a non-negotiable for me for sure. Um, I thrive in bright places, like I said, and I don't like being surrounded by dark things because it's like depressing to me. I don't know. I would prefer like wood floors. That's not necessarily super important. There's really not too much. I just knew that I would know exactly what I wanted when I saw what I want. Also too, I really enjoy like a lot of open space. And I know with Philly apartments, you know, they're built on top of each other and they're stacked in little rows on the blocks. So they are, they always tend to be very narrow and long, which is totally fine. Um, but I like a lot of space to roam around. So if things are too like blocked off into separate little like areas, I don't like that. Cause I think that just, in my opinion, I'm not an architect. I'm not a, 
a des an interior designer. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I think that just takes up space and makes it look smaller than it sh than it actually is. So this wasn't necessarily a non-negotiable for me, but I definitely wanted a space, at least in the living room slash kitchen, where it was just like very open. Another thing I was really looking out for was how much square feet the apartment was. I have a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm willing to downsize if need be, but I was trying to think of, okay, well, where can I put everything that I have? Um, obviously that's important. You don't want to not think about that before settling on, on an apartment because, you know, you might get to the apartment and it's 450 square feet and you're like, where the hell am I going to go with all my shit? So I definitely was keeping that in mind as well. I was kind of looking within the 550 square feet and above. The apartment that I ended up falling in love with that I, you know, am like trying to settle on right now, that one is, I think, I think it's like 600 and some square feet. So it's perfect. It's very, very open. It is a studio apartment, but I absolutely love this apartment and would choose it over most one bedroom, one bath, one bedroom, one bath apartments because of how open it is. And I also feel like that is because there is extremely high ceilings in this place. It's all very white and bright. It has a huge, huge industrial window. The kitchen is beautiful. There's like a huge long island, tons of space, um, tons of storage space in the kitchen, a really nice sized fridge. Um, so I can make it work and I just have all of these plans, which I, I cannot wait for. Um, there is a closet, the closet, because the ceilings are so high in the actual apartment, the um, closet goes up really, really high. So even like going to Ikea or whatever, I don't know if I'll do this, but if I needed to add more space or store more things, I could always add up or do like a customized closet thing situation from Ikea. Um, also, there's a washer and dryer in the unit and there's a regular sized bathroom, nothing super special, but I cannot wait to show you guys the place. Um, and I guess my last tip for apartments overall is just to kind of think of general areas you want to be in and think of where it's convenient for you and where you see yourself being that's obviously most convenient um so for me i am still a college student i will be taking not three classes anymore two classes in the fall semester of 2020 so I will still, and one of them is online, so that doesn't really matter. So technically I'm only taking one class in person um, on campus. So I want it to be close enough to get to campus without having many issues at all. Um, and where I'd be located with this apartment is perfect. So I kind of based where I was, where I was looking to live off of um, school and commuting to school. And also, um, do I feel safe and comfortable being alone in that apartment? And then also to like, do you picture yourself just like walking outside of your apartment and not only feeling safe, but you know, like going for a walk easily and being nearby things that you enjoy being around. And if that's not important to you, then you can completely disregard that. Also the safe thing, I say that because I'm living in Philadelphia and there are some parts of Philadelphia that are still up and coming or are obviously really run down and are not the safest to be in, especially being a 21 year old girl. So um, I wanted to feel safe so came down to two different areas that I really, really liked and thought that would be the most convenient for me. Also too, this is another thing for me, I have a car down in Philly and I don't appreciate paying for parking in Philly at all. Three years that I've been down there, I've had my car there, parked out on the street, never had any issues with it, and it always is free where I live now. It's always been free. The apartment that I am settling on now there's so much parking around and it's free and there's just, there should not be an issue. There's also a parking lot that I could pay for that's like gated in, 
but I wouldn't do that. I am comfortable with my car being out on the street and it's there's a lot of space to do that. But anyway, that was another thing for me. But I narrowed it down to two different areas that I really liked. The one area is like my dream area that, you know, I didn't necessarily, I found some apartments there, but um, it just obviously didn't work out because the realtors didn't e email me back. And I don't love those apartments nearly as much as I love the apartment that I'm looking at right now. But that's totally okay because the apartment I'm looking at right now is in my second choice area and very, very happy overall um, with the areas. And I just figured that would help you guys out. As I well. think it's important to think about, you know, mainly your price range, what you're looking for in the apartment, your non-negotiables, and like your top areas that would make the most sense to you. So... That was a long winded talk right there. I hope you guys found some useful tips in this chat. Um, and if you are going through an apartment search right now, good luck. I wish you the best of luck because I know how stressful it can be. I figured this would also help some of you. I do know a lot of people are graduating and again, we don't know what the state of the world will be like, but I'm sure people are probably going to be looking for apartments very soon, if not, already so hopefully this will help out any of you guys if you're currently going through the same thing or will be very soon so um yeah this is also just very relevant to me right now as i told you i'm literally going through the process as we speak and um of course i'll keep you guys updated throughout everything but with moving vlogs coming up i figured this would be a little good preface um, before getting into those. Thank you again so much for watching. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.